Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's program from my pokey little room somewhere near the ASOC BTS in Bangkok. And uh, as usual, the rooms don't quite uh, end out exactly as they looked in the photos, but it, uh, well, it's clean and comfortable and that's really all that matters and a good location uh, as I sort of flit around the city. Today I'm heading off to Icon Siam, which is on the other side of the river, a sort of an upscale shopping center, and it's got a display called the Monet Virtual Exhibition, I think. Anyway, I'll get some photos and uh, we'll include those in tomorrow's program. But yesterday I went to the motor show and uh, well, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like EVs, but let me tell you, the Thais do love EVs. And then there were some beautiful displays from uh, BMW and uh, Audi and Mercedes and the sort of the legacy brands here. We've got Toyota, uh, Honda, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, Mazda, of course, uh, Nissan. And those stands were empty. Everybody was looking at these shiny new EVs out of China, and some of them looked absolutely stunning. Here's just a little bit of footage. Now, it was very well subscribed, a lot of people there, but all the attention, I mean, clearly, was people wanting to sit around, touch, and uh, open the doors of these new Chinese EVs, including some new brands I hadn't even heard of, but some of them look very impressive. So, um, well, it's just the, the reality here that I think EVs have got a, a bright future, at least here in Thailand. But let's get on with the news. And today is Thailand's Father's Day 2023. Thanks to the Patia News for reminding us. And it marks a day of special significance for the people of Thailand. It's Father's Day, commemorated in honor of the late, great King Pumipona Dunyadet, whose birthday falls on this date. Although the beloved monarch passed away in 2016, his legacy lives on, and Father's Day remains a cherished occasion for Thais to express their gratitude and love for their fathers. And King Pumipon, widely revered as the father of the nation, ruled Thailand for an unprecedented 70 years. And please note, the government offices, including immigration, will be closed today in observance of the occasion. The sale of alcohol is not prohibited on this day. We remind you, it's not prohibited, so don't worry. But happy Father's Day to all the fathers in Thailand. And not a completely disconnected story from Nation, nationthailand.com. His Majesty the King's son travels to Thailand to mark Father's Day. Now, this is the second such visit of this gentleman since uh, he was in virtual exile for many years. And I think it's significant. His Majesty's second eldest son, Vasharason, returned to Thailand on Sunday for his second visit this year to attend the nation's Father's Day celebrations. And travelling to Bangkok on Air France, the 42-year-old posted a photo on his Facebook wall of the view from the plane window. The accompanying caption reads, As far as the eye can see, the blue skyline, the land of Siam. And according to Thai language media, the king's son's expected to stay in the kingdom for two weeks, during which he will participate in Father's Day events, engage in charitable activities, and deliver a special lecture to the public. It says he also reportedly plans to travel to other provinces. I don't know what those provinces are. And by the way, if it does sound a little bit echoey today, I don't have my usual Yeti uh, mic. It's back in uh, Panga. I travel with a backpack, so it's just too cumbersome and really heavy to bring on a plane uh, in, in a backpack. So uh, you'll just have to put up with the slightly echoey sound from uh, the MacBook Pro. And a big thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine. We really appreciate Sean and the, uh, the team's support of the program. There's a link in the description below, which is a special deal for TNT viewers. Now the big story and the talk in a lot of social media yesterday was the documentary from Deutsche Welle, which uh, we'll get to the contents of that in just a moment, but it's been covered widely in Thai media. So uh, let's see what's happening. And we start with ThaiPBSWorld.com and Patia police explain alleged bribery in child prostitution case. 
as we go through the various explanations in the Thai media today, you realise there's really not much explanation at all. Patia police have issued a statement today in an attempt to clarify a German media report claiming that a German tourist who was arrested for buying sexual services from an underage girl in Patia Bar in September last year was released after allegedly paying a million baht bribe to police before leaving Thailand. And it happened on September the 10th last year when police and local administration officials raided the Cobra Beer Bar in Bangla Mung after it was alleged that sexual services by underage girls were being offered to customers. The bar's owner, a 42-year-old Thai woman, and her British partner were arrested and charged with providing the services of prostitutes. And the police expanded their investigation and claimed that a German customer used services from an underage employee of the bar. They arrested him on September the 24th in a hotel in Bangla Mung district. And two days later, the German suspect was taken to the Patia court to have his detention extended for further questioning. The suspect then sought bail and the application was granted by the court on the condition that he must report to the court on November the 14th or his 500,000 baht surety would be confiscated. But on November the 7th, the German suspect flew out of Thailand and the Commissioner of Region 2 Provincial Police said several law enforcement agencies were involved in the case. The police would try to uncover what went wrong and which agency was responsible. The statement from the police did not specifically address the 1 million baht, which is alleged to have been paid. So the usual, oh, we'll look into it. Now we now go to Cowshot English and their coverage and PM orders investigation into German suspect bribing Thai officials. And he said the incident mentioned in the documentary happened last year, but no matter when it happens, we have to fix it because it's our duty. As I said, tourism promotion policy is a big issue. We solved these problems together. So it's all about how it's going to affect tourism. No discussion about uh, the prostitution situation or the underage girls mentioned in the documentary. And Deutsche Welle published a documentary titled Sex Tourism in Thailand, which showed the film team coming across evidence of pedophilia crimes, even though the officials said there's no longer any prostitution of minors in the red light district of Patia. Well, if they're so concerned about the image of Thailand, they might start with stopping making the police look like complete idiots making statements like that. Nation Thailand says police to investigate bribery allegations reported by German media. And Police General Surachat, he's the Deputy Commissioner, and he was featured in the documentary with a, quite a candid interview. He's ordered the Patia police to investigate the allegations and to take action against any offenders found to be involved in corruption. He also said that he'd ordered the Immigration Bureau to check whether the tourist had really left Thailand as claimed in the report. And he said if the allegations are found to be true, it would be a serious case of corruption and would damage Thailand's reputation as a tourist destination. Oh, for heaven's sake. And it would also raise questions about the effectiveness of the Thai government's efforts to combat sex trafficking and child sexual abuse. We go to BangkokPost.com and they're reporting documentary rocks Pattaya tourism. Content of should be news show blocked in Thailand. Well, they're not doing a very good job at blocking it in Thailand. I watched the documentary again this morning in English. It's also available in uh, the German language on YouTube as well. And with the image of Pattaya as a sex tourism destination being amplified by a German media organisation, the private sector is concerned about the consequences as it could impact the overall tourism market. So again, uh, no concern about the sex workers, no concern about the underage sex workers. Uh, what are their priorities? And Marissa, who we often quote, the president of the Thai Hotels Association, said a similar incident regarding sex tourism in the city was reported in Germany roughly 20 years ago. And Mrs. Marissa, who's also the owner of three hotels in Pattaya, said the solutions that the local administration and private sector could implement to solve this problem included consistently promoting other products and activities that draw other segments and gradually replacing sex tourism with other attractions. 
So let's not talk about it. Let's just push it under the carpet. Let's ignore that it even happens, according to the Thai police. I think the response has been pretty poor. But let me assure you, this story is going to be ringing around the media for quite a few days yet. Tuesday's TNT, thank you very much for dropping in and apologies for uh, my pokey little room and uh, the sound today, but we move on to some other stories. And Thai PBS World saying that subsidy approved to discourage sugarcane farmers from burning canes. So this is just one of the many measures that the new government seems to be implementing to do at least something to try and cope with the burning season, which uh, officially starts next month. The story says the cabinet decided yesterday to grant 120 baht in subsidy for each ton of cut raw sugar cane as an incentive to discourage farmers from burning the cane to facilitate harvesting, which increases PM 2.5 air pollution. The deputy industry minister says that as many as 40,000 sugarcane farmers are expected to join the program, which is due to start in January with the new sugarcane milling season. And while the burning of cane makes them easier to cut, the sugar content is reduced and the farmers fetch lower prices for their produce. Let's see how Bangkok Post have reported this and they say Cabinet OK's 8 billion baht package for sugarcane farmers. And the mobile cabinet yesterday green-lighted incentives worth 8 billion baht for sugarcane farmers who agreed to cut fresh sugarcane without burning the residue, a move aimed at helping reduce the amount of PM2.5. And under the scheme which is aimed at addressing the burning of the residue of their crop by sugarcane farmers, the government would offer farmers who agreed to cut fresh sugarcane without burning the residue 120 baht per ton. The government identified the need to urgently address the issue of PM2.5 pollution, which is worsened every year and affects the health of millions of people. And here's some numbers. Thailand's sugarcane output estimated at 82.4 million tonnes for this crop year, with domestic sugar consumption projected at 25.7 million sacks, which represents 2.57 million tonnes. Well, that's a shitload of sugar and uh, there is a real Thai fixation with sugar in just about everything, including a lot of Thai food dishes. I've done my best over the past uh, year or so to try and eliminate sugar from my diet, but it's very hard to, uh, to get rid of if you do like eating Thai food. And in a move to help the sugar industry, the cabinet on November the 14th endorsed raising the domestic sugar price by two baht to better align with higher production costs. So if you're wanting to know exactly what the government's going to do to try and address the horrendous air pollution in the north of Thailand during the burning season, well, this is one thing. Now, those fires that are lit over the borders in Myanmar, Laos and Cambodia, they're going to be much more complex to get under control because, well, of course, the smoke just blows straight over the border into Thailand. And to this big regional story, 11 hikers dead after Indonesia volcano erupts, dozens still missing. Well, I walked on this volcano and went to the crater myself, Mount Merapi, and I said to them at the time, well, does this uh, volcano ever erupt? Oh, no, 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 that's not going to happen. And 11 hikers were found dead yesterday and another 12 were missing after a volcano erupted in Indonesia with rescuers racing to carry injured and burned survivors down the mountain on foot. The rescuers worked through the night to find dozens of hikers stranded on Mount Merapi on the island of Sumatra after it spewed an ash tower 3,000 metres uh, taller than the volcano itself into the sky on Sunday. The dead hikers were found near Merapi's crater after the 2,891 metre volcano rained ash on nearby villages. 12 hikers are missing, three more were found alive and 49 had safely descended from the crater, some with burns and fractures. And a local rescue agency spokesperson said the rescue efforts had been broken up by sporadic eruptions but the search was still going on despite the risks. 
and Merapi is on the second alert level of Indonesia's four-step system and authorities have imposed a three-kilometre exclusion zone around its crater. In the Indonesian archipelago sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire where the meeting of continental plates causes high volcanic and seismic activity. And uh, we're reminded the Southeast Asian country has nearly 130 active volcanoes. You might remember one called Krakatoa. The video footage there was published on ABC News in Australia, although I think it was locally sourced uh, footage from local people. And with that, thank you very much for joining us on our quick whip around the main news stories from uh, Thailand. Coming to you from Bangkok today from my pokey little room, but I've got a big day in Bangkok ahead, heading back to Pangar tonight, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.